What's up guys, my name is Brandon and today Apple released the first beta of iOS 13.3.1 just one week after the release of the disappointing iOS 13.3 software. And if you don't know why I'm saying it's disappointing, watch my video from yesterday. It is linked up in the cards right now and also down in the description below. But yes, today we have a beta of a point release and that's pretty unusual, especially since there is an obvious flaw in the flagship feature of the previous public release. But anyways, let's go ahead and dive in and see what's new in 13.3.1. So you can see here the size of this update. It is pretty big. It came in at 3.95 gigabytes. That's just because it is overriding the software that's already on your device. You're not losing all that space or anything. But that was the size here on my iPhone 11 Pro. It was also around the same size on my iPad Pro as well, which I did install this on. So let's go ahead and check out the build number for 13.3.1. You can see 13.3.1 right there. 17D5026C is the build here for the first beta. And if we go ahead and scroll down, you can see we do also have an updated modem firmware version right there. So 1.04.01. So pretty big jump there in modem firmware as well. So if you were having issues with connectivity in terms of LTE, drop calls, things like that, you may wanna go ahead and update because this could fix those issues. And just for comparison, you can see there the modem firmware version on iOS 13.3 was 1.03.12. So again, pretty significant jump for just a point release in terms of modem firmware versions. Now, as far as what's actually new and what's changed in iOS 13.3.1, if you guys watched my previous video on iOS 13.3, you would know that I talked about two potential fixes coming up in 13.3.1. And the first one was the bypass for screen time communication limits. So we are expecting Apple to patch that in 13.3.1, but it appears that you could still bypass the communication limits in screen time. So you can see I'm on iOS 13.3.1 right here. I do have the communication limits set. They are on and I'm only allowed to contact and talk to my contacts. But if an unknown contact or an unknown number texts me, I'm still able to go into that contact and click on add a contact and then start talking to them. I can see that message they sent and then start talking to them. So that was the supposed bypass in 13.3 that we thought Apple was gonna fix with 13.3.1, but it appears that you can still bypass that and contact people even when they're not in your contacts list. So it's pretty strange that Apple did not address that in 13.3.1. Now, of course, this is in the beta stage. This is just beta one. So we could see that by the time the final version gets released, but it's, it's weird because it was the last public release. 13.3 is a public release. And then they release a beta with the supposed fix. You know, they're supposed to be fixing it in the next update. And I don't know, unless we get like a 13.4 or a 13.3.2 or something like that later this week, we're gonna have to wait until the new year to see a fix for a bypass for the flagship feature of the last public release. It just really doesn't make much sense to me. Now, another thing we thought was gonna be fixed with the next update after 13.3 was the ultra wideband technology in the new iPhone. Basically, there was some controversy surrounding this and Apple said that it's ultra wideband technology is why newer iPhones like the iPhone 11 shares location data, even when the setting is completely disabled. You would still see the arrow up there and your status bar and things like that. No location data was being sent anywhere or sold or anything like that. So I really don't think it was a big deal at all. But of course the media made it a much bigger deal than it ever should have been in the first place. However, Apple did say they were gonna add a new toggle. They actually confirmed that they would be adding a new toggle for this inside of their next update. And this is the next update, 13.3.1, and I do not see a toggle for turning off the ultra wideband technology anywhere. I've gone everywhere. I went into, let's see, general, nothing inside of general. I went down to privacy, location services. If we turn location services on and go all the way down to system services, you can see there are no new toggles here at all. If we go down to significant locations, there's nothing in there. And if we go all the way back and go to general and airdrop, nothing there either. So I've looked everywhere for some sort of toggle or some sort of indication that Apple is trying to address this controversy about the ultra wideband technology and using your location. But I see no indication that that has been fixed or addressed either in 13.3.1, which is again, just very strange. And I have not been able to find anything new or changed at all in 13.3.1. Now I have been seeing people reporting that their mail application issues are being fixed in 13.3.1. As you guys know, I did not have any issues with mail at all in 13.3, but some people are reporting, the people that I guess still had issues are reporting that those are fixed in 13.3.1. Some of the big ones are opening up the email from notifications. So like if you had a notification right there and you tapped on it, 
it would actually go in it actually goes into the email now instead of going to like the front page inbox right here and then your app just freezing your mail app just freezing i never had that issue but apparently that's been fixed in 13.3.1 and then there are other small issues with mail that have apparently been fixed as well but once again i've not had any of those so i cannot confirm or deny that now as far as other bug fixes go the ones that i talked about in my previous video like the text notifications basically when i would lock my phone i would not get any indication that i got a text message no sound no vibration my phone wouldn't even light up from the lock screen anything like that i've not been able to test 13.3.1 enough yet to be able to tell you if that's been fixed or not and the same goes with youtube reloading youtube reloading did seem fine for me in my initial testing for about 45 minutes but still that's not enough and you guys know that I had RAM management issues with YouTube. If you watched my last video, you would know I had RAM management issues with YouTube reloading. I would be watching a video. I would go out, I would go into my messages and respond to a text message and then go back into YouTube. And all of a sudden that video is gone. It takes me back to the front page. I'd have to go to my history and refine that video. And it was specifically for live streams for me. It didn't really happen with videos too often but it did happen with live stream, but it could have just been how I was using the phone at that time. So I will talk about that more in my follow-up video coming either later this week or early next week. And then of course, another one of the major issues was with Instagram videos playing the audio in the background when you would leave out of the Instagram application, go into another application and go back to the home screen. You would continue hearing the audio from that Instagram video, even when you lock your phone sometimes. So I have not been able to test that. I don't even have Instagram on the specific device. I did test it on my iPad and I did not hear it. But once again, I will report to you guys and let you know if that's been fixed at a later date in my follow-up video to iOS 13.3.1. Now, in terms of performance, I would expect iOS 13.3.1 to be exactly the same pretty much as iOS 13.3. I mean, there may be some small bug fixes that Apple isn't talking about. There's no release notes for this update either. So there could just be some bug fixes, some minor things. Uh, but I would imagine the biggest reason for this update was just to fix cell connectivity issues with that big modem firmware update. I would imagine that was the main reason for this update. So performance and battery life is probably going to be exactly the same as iOS 13.3, but connectivity will probably be better due to that modem firmware update. But other than that, that's pretty much it for iOS 13.3.1. I'm very, very surprised that Apple released this without any of the fixes that I talked about previously, especially, you know, one week before, or probably gonna have to wait a couple weeks before the next update either beta or public release so unless apple releases another software version this week which they only have three days to do it and that would be wednesday thursday or friday i don't see them releasing anything on the week of christmas or anything on the week of the new year so that leads us down to january 6th as the next earliest time to get a software update if we don't get anything today so very surprised to see apple not push out a public release to fix you know the issues that i talked about that were on the last public release because even if this beta did fix those issues with communication limits and uh, the ultra wideband technology and the location data, even if they did fix those in this beta, not everybody's on the beta program. So those people that are on the public release are still not going to have a fix for weeks. And, you know, that could be a big problem with people with kids and, you know, using the communication limits and then be able to bypass it so easily. So just very confusing by Apple. I'm very confused right now. Um, so hopefully we do see some kind of another update this week. Uh, I don't think that happens very often. I've not seen that happen very often but it could happen given the fact that we have holidays coming up. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much it. Much ado about nothing here with iOS 13.3.1. Pretty much a letdown of a beta update, which is pretty hard because you don't really have too many expectations or expect anything great out of a beta to begin with, but I'm still let down by this update. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And if you guys found anything, maybe I'm blind. Maybe I just don't know what to look for. If you found anything new in this, let me know down in the comment section below because I could not find a single thing new in this update. But if you guys still enjoyed this video and me just letting you guys know that this has been released or if you just enjoyed hearing my voice, whatever the case may be, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a thumbs up and of course subscribe so you don't miss the next update that Apple pushes out. But anyways guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.